Hello, everyone. Welcome to the uh, Data Center Solutions uh, webinar uh, from Johnson Controls. Uh, we're going to start in a couple minutes uh, just to give some uh, additional folks uh, some time to sign on. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to the Data Center Solution uh, webinar on acoustics, uh, the hidden data center risk. Uh, we're excited to be presenting to you today uh, about this amazing product and technology. Um, so I first wanted to welcome you uh, to the webinar. This is part of a series of webinars uh, dedicated and named at the data center space, uh, really showcasing some key considerations and challenges in the space. Uh, as well as what Johnson Controls is doing with our customers uh, to confront these challenges. My name is Mike Zarilli. I lead the Data Center Solutions team uh, here within the building's uh, business unit of Johnson Controls. Uh, excited to have everyone on the phone here. Uh, we're going to go through the presentation, uh, and then at the end, we'll have an opportunity for questions to be answered. Uh, you can either submit those questions uh, via uh, the, the software on GoToMeeting, uh, or uh, we can do it uh, via voice, I believe, as well. Correct. Oh, excuse me, not via voice. Please submit via uh, text. Uh, so uh, just to kick things off, I wanted to uh, just take a step back and really showcase uh, what Johnson Controls is doing in the data center space. Uh, data centers are, you know, we've been playing within data centers from the beginning. It's an area where we've been working with customers on their challenges and we've been confronting uh, those challenges for really since the beginning. Uh, and one that we are investing more heavily in going forward as well. Uh, and so when we take a step back and we think about how we're working with our customers, we're really working with them to confront four main challenges. Uh, the first one's really around driving efficiency. And you know the typical kind of traditional way to look at that is total cost ownership and uh, PUE. Uh, but we're taking it a step further and looking at the maintenance side of it, looking at the WE side of it. And then the second challenge is really around reliability and really driving uptime and driving resiliency. And that resiliency aspect is, is critical, especially amongst the, the infrastructure systems uh, where we're focused. Security is the, the third aspect here, really driving security throughout the data center, across those infrastructures, you know, notably in access and in fire, as well as in uh, building. And then lastly, uh, flexibility. Driving simplification, standardization, um, compatibility and responsiveness. And so as we've seen the huge amount of growth within data centers, you know, driving these aspects of it really reduces the growth of new data center development as, a, as well as any retrofits. And so working with our customers to do that. Now we flip to the next slide. We're doing this across, we're confronting these challenges really across uh, several, five main dimensions, and we're doing it holistically. And so four of those dimensions are really related to our product businesses and our product groups. 
And so the first being building management, fire uh, safety, security, and HVAC equipment. And the last one is around service. And what's interesting about what, how Johnson Controls has really gone after this space is we're doing this globally. We have these product offerings that are globally, and we, and we complement that product offering with global service from an operations and maintenance standpoint. And so it's something that we're really excited about. Now, if we flip to the next slide and just deep dive into the types of products uh, that we offer within the space, I just wanna, you know, we're, we're in a great position and we're fortunate to have a broad portfolio of products. And this is just the foundation of, from which we can build from. But I want to highlight some key products where we think, you know, that are very interesting in the space. One is our water cooled centrifugal chiller. This is a leading in, this is a best in class uh, chiller, uh, leading the industry in terms of uh, driving efficiency uh, and obviously meeting the requirements in that given data center. Uh, and it's something that we're excited about. On the air cooled air cooled chiller side, we have a lot of modular uh, free cooling chillers that we're quite excited about. And and really pertinent for the space. On the building management side, our Metasys product does a wonderful job of controlling and optimizing within the data center. On the fire safety side, uh, fire detection equipment, as well as uh, any ASD aspirating smoke detector uh, type of equipment, and as we'll discuss today on the suppression side. And on the security side, really providing you know, intrusion, access control, um, perimeter uh, protection and other uh, integrated systems within the security uh, por platform. And then lastly on the service side, I just want to call out two uh, interesting offerings on the proactive chiller replacement for uh, retrofit applications. And then finally on chiller plan optimization, really working with our customers regardless of who OEMs the equipment to optimize that chiller plan. So we're really excited about this uh, product portfolio as it relates to data centers. I think it's a foundation for much from which we are growing from. And of course, uh, I'm going to stop there and let us uh, continue with what we're here focused on in terms of fire suppression, uh, but wanted to provide that holistic picture for us uh, just to get started. So uh, I'll pass it on to uh, Derek Sandel and Christian Stevenart, who will present the fire suppression acoustic nozzle. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Welcome, everyone. I'm happy to be here today to uh, talk through some of our exciting new technology uh, in the acoustic nozzle and the acoustic solutions that we can provide our customers in the data center industry. Um, like Mike mentioned, um, myself and Christian, uh, we both come from a, a wide background and experience in the fire protection industry. Uh, so we're here to uh, you know, walk you guys through our technology and the services we can provide you uh, as the customers and end users of our product. Okay, the agenda we're going to talk through today, uh, we're going to talk a little bit. Uh, I'll present uh, on the fire protection solutions and data centers and why the customers use different types of systems to cover certain risks. We'll then talk about our acoustic, you know, realization of acoustic sensitivity in data centers. I'll provide an overview of sound, overview of some of the research and studies we've done on fire suppression system sounds, as well as, uh, as our hard drive sound study. I'll then talk about uh, our solution that we generated as a result of this research, which is comprised of the acoustic nozzle uh, and then the services and the calculations that we can perform to show that uh, our solutions will help mitigate any of those acoustic risks or concerns that data centers may have. Uh, Christian will then talk about the suppression portfolio uh, as well as kind of our business development and customer support process and the next steps of how you guys can reach out to us to get additional support. So looking at fire suppression in data centers, you know, fire suppression systems are really employed to reduce the risk. And, and those four main risks are building and occupant protection. Here, the primary use of fire, fire sprinklers is used to protect the structure and occupants. Uh, then the next three uh, are basically elective based on the data centers uh, and the types of, you know, risks that they may be associated at trying to reduce. And that being disruption in service and downtime, customer service and image, and safeguarding critical data. So with these, the clean agent and water mist products tend to be used to cover one or multiple of these risks. 
one of the things that we've discovered and we've seen over the past few years is the advancement in IT technologies and it's specific in hard drive advancement. The density of, energy, of data storage is, is becoming very compact and it's ultimately led to an increase in sensitivity to acoustics. And we've actually seen, here's some examples in the news, in the last couple of years, it's becoming you know, kind of prevalent when either accidental fire suppression discharges or you know, actual fire events that have resulted in, in hard drive you know, interruption in downtime at data centers. So the first one I have on the list, is September 2016, uh, a large bank in Romania actually was shut down when a service technician working on a system inadvertently discharged the system and it shut down the bank uh, for over a day, resulting in millions of dollars in lost transactions. October 2017, the Microsoft Cloud Server uh, was, was out due to a fire system discharge as well. And actually just recently, about three weeks ago, uh, there was a NASDAQ in the Nordic region was shut down when a fire suppression system you know, caused outage in their computer systems, taking about, about 10 hours of actual downtime before they could come back online to continue trading. So all of this you know, begs, begs these three main questions. Well, how loud are fire suppression systems? How sensitive are hard drives to noise? And then what can be done to lower this risk of acoustics? Before I kind of present our research and uh, you know, sound analyzation of our suppression systems, I wanna give you guys a little bit of background to understand sound just in general terms. You know, so when you look at sound, it's actually a wave. Uh, it's, it's micro, you know, changes in air pressure that cause vibrations. Uh, and these vibrations can transmit, you know, not just through the air, but once they come in contact with a hard solid object, they can cause that object to vibrate as well. So the sounds have, you know, different frequencies, which is a measure of the wavelength as well as different amplitudes or the loudness, how, how loud or quiet a sound is. Looking at how we measure in group frequencies, uh, you can look at a single narrow band frequency on the right, or what's more traditionally done is looked at groups of frequencies. It's pretty difficult to do an analysis on every single frequency, uh, you know, when you're trying to find a sensitivity to, to a frequency. So more and more often, scientists use octaves or a third octave uh, grouping of frequencies to actually do studies and characterize objects. When you take measurements on sound, there's multiple scales that actually can be used. One that many people are probably familiar with or have seen if they've looked at studies on, on sound output and like OSHA uh, human exposure is the DBA scale. And this DBA scale is actually what most handheld instruments are set up as a default to measure. However, in the case of acoustics for electronics and in data centers, when you're looking at hard drive sensitivity, for example, you're not really interested in how the human ear hears sound. So it's best to use the DBZ scale, which is an unweighted uh, measurement of sound. And speaking of measurements, the scale that's typically used to measure sound is decibels. So you see a simple scale here showing, you know, from a quiet room being 40 decibels all the way up to 140 decibels being that of a, a jet airplane take, at takeoff. Uh, this is a logarithmic scale. So one thing to point is about every six decibels in increase uh, is equivalent to doubling the sound energy. So now sound is, is translated from a source to a receiver. So this model here kind of explains uh, descriptively and shows pictorially as well, right? As, as sound travels from a source that generates sound as, as sound power, it generates through various paths to the receiver. And that receiver hears sound as sound pressure. And as sound tra is transmitted by the source, that path causes an impact to the sound, changing it in some way, you know, either absorbing, reflecting, uh, 
But ultimately, once the receiver hears it, it's different than when it was actually generated at the source. And this sound power uh, to sound pressure calculation can actually be done through this equation you see here in the lower left corner, which is actually known as the room acoustics equation. And we'll talk a little bit more about this later when I get into looking at you know, the, the studies that we can perform for individual data centers to do calculations to understand you know, actual hard drive noise levels for each unique room or application. To get a little bit better understanding of sound power versus sound pressure, I just wanted to present this slide that shows and describes very high level the difference. So sound power, as you see on the left, is a rate of emission of acoustic energy. It's dependent on the source and it's independent of the environment or the distance from the source. It should be noted that you can't directly measure sound power, uh, but it actually you know, can be calculated by taking a source and bringing it to a calibrated room or calibrated chamber that then you can back calculate what that sound power is. Sound pressure is the amplitude of a disturbance. So it's, it's the sound pressure that a source hears due to a sound power that's generating noise. It's de dependent on the environment. So you remember the you know, paradigm of how sound is transferred from the source to the receiver? the environment here is causing an impact on that sound. And this can actually be you know, easily measured through microphones. And it's important to note that when you're trying to compare equipment or sources of noise, one versus the other, it's important to use actually sound power measurements versus using sound pressure. Because you're taking out, you can take out the environment impacts then, and you know the true difference between one source and another. So now going back and looking at the real problem that we're trying to discuss here today, and that being sound generated in data centers that are causing interruption in service. So the first thing we wanted to do was, you know, answer to ourselves, well, how loud is the fire suppression system? And what is the true problem that we're, we're dealing with? So we, we did a quick study. We looked at taking one of our inert gas suppression systems. We brought it in our chambers. We set every, all of our equipment up and we did several discharges and many measurements. Uh, what we found uh, was, was quite surprising. When you bring it back to the scale in the bottom right corner, we found that suppression systems, especially inert gas, can actually have noise exceeding 130 decibels. And actually in some cases, you know, very closely approaching that of 140 decibels, which, which is this you know, sound of a jet airplane at takeoff. So it, it can be very, very loud. And we analyzed and looked a little bit deeper to say, well, what's causing this noise? And when we looked at the fire suppression nozzles, which are actually dictated by many fire suppression codes like NFPA uh, that say you have to release this agent into the room in a given amount of time. And you have to bring, you know, whether it's oxygen level down to a certain level or, you know, evaporate agent to extract heat away from the fire. You have to do it in such a rapid rate that the velocities coming out of these nozzles can often be supersonic. And that's what we were seeing in this case was supersonic shock waves uh, exiting the nozzle is what's generating that very, very high noise. So we knew right there that you know, we were gonna have to probably develop some sort of new nozzle technology that was gonna be you know, required to get, get to a lower level of sound up. But we wanted to understand and look at, well, how low do we actually have to get from a sound output to not impact hard drives? So that led us into our hard drive study. So we started looking at different enterprise drives. We selected 12 models, kind of cross-section of different manufacturers, different capacities, uh, as well as a manufacturer date range. We didn't want to select all 2016 hard drives when we did this study. Uh, simply because, you know, data centers, you know, don't always have brand new hard drives. So we wanted to make sure we chose ones that were manufactured uh, that would represent what we felt was, was close to what the population of data centers would have. We took those hard drives and we developed a process uh, which included bringing them into an anechoic chamber, 
which is a soundproof chamber. Here's a picture of it on the right. Uh, and that shows our setup on the top. We have sound generators, uh, very high powered sound generators hooked through amplifiers uh, that tie to our sound noise generator. And it all loops back through to a microphone at the surface of the hard drive, which that microphone providing real-time feedback so we can very precisely control the sound generated and exposed to the surface of the hard drive. Noise was applied over a 500 hertz to 10,000 hertz uh, range of frequencies at one-third octaves. Uh, and these, these, this band was really chosen based on the profile of noise that was discharged from a fire suppression system. So we noticed that, you know, that is the highest output of those frequencies in a discharge. We vary the sound pressure level at the hard drive between 80 and 130 decibels. And one of the things I'll discuss here in a little bit is what we did is set a performance limit of 50% reduction in read write speed. For example, we, you know, we started with a baseline of the hard drive, understanding its read write capabilities, and then, you know, took a 50% of that as an acceptable level as we increase the sound pressure level. Once we hit that, then you know, we kind of put a dot and a bullet point to say, okay, here's the 50% read write speed for this drive at this one third octave at this sound pressure level. And that 50% value was chosen when we started actually looking at some of the plots that we pulled from individual hard drive tests. So this, this slide shows on the right and left hand uh, pictures, there's two hard drives and it's just showing the comparison between the two. So if you look at the left hand plot, for example, the green represents a relative 100% read write speed compared to the baseline. And then red essentially means, you know, zero, it's not reading and writing. So we, we noticed when we were you know, testing our first few hard drives, as we went into the you know, green, yellow, and then to red, that, that transition from reading nearly 100 read write, 100% read write speed to zero rapidly happened. You know, within five to 10 decibels in most cases, it went from 100 to zero. So we, we then said we don't wanna set our performance specification at you know, zero read write speed. We wanna have a little bit of a cushion so that our specifications and ultimately what we say is an acceptable limit, there's a little bit of buffer there. So we, we settled on 50% based on this, this data. The other thing shown on these slides is, you'll notice between the right and left hand plots, they're quite different. So there is a lot of variation that was noticed in this study from one hard drive to the next. As an example, the hard drive on the left is, is a standard hard drive, uh, not filled with any gas, but the drive on the right is actually a helium filled hard drive. We notice that the helium filled hard drives tend to perform a little bit better at the low frequencies. Uh, however, when you get into the little bit higher frequencies, the 4K to 10K, they were approximately the same as, as standard hard drives. So, so that was one thing we wanted to look at was you know, understanding is the new emerging technology and hard drives better uh, or worse, or how do they compare to, to you know, standard non-sealed uh, inert gas filled drives. Uh, but in any case, we believe that whether it's, it's a sealed or helium filled drive, uh, they're still sensitive to acoustics. And this, this next slide shows a compilation of all of our 12 hard drives tested. The left-hand plot shows the variation among the different 12 hard drives. And the right-hand plot is the average of all of those hard drives. So the red line represents the average 50% read-write speed across 500 to 10K hertz of the 12 drives we tested. So key takeaways from our study. You know, we observe variation in noise performance across hard drives, manufacturer to manufacturer and model to model. Some of the hard drives even began to reduce in read-write speeds when they're exposed to, you know, what was relatively low sound of 85 decibels. 
Uh, so, so, you know, one of the things that we really identified is it's not just, you know, fire suppression equipment that's probably going to have an impact on hard drives, but potentially anything that's generating more than 85 decibels is going to start reducing performance of drives in data centers. As I mentioned before, the new helium drives perform well at low frequencies, but yet around the same at the higher frequencies. Hard drives in general, from the last slide, perform 50% performance at about 110 decibels across the 500 to 10 kHz range. You know, some frequencies is a little bit higher than 110, but just in general, if you just keep that number in mind of 110, that's a good number to keep in your memory or, or even to consider for a specification. However, if you do have a data center that, you know, maybe is a very critical data center, uh, you know, in national defense or, you know, high dollar, very, you know, fast transactions in, in trading or, or banking, you may want to consider specifications less than 110 to reduce your risk. But nonetheless, our main finding was, you know, data centers should consider acoustics and take action to reduce the risk of hard drive performance reductions due to noise. So knowing these two pieces of information, it led us down a path to say, you know, we needed to, to develop a solution that would lower the sound output of our fire suppression system. So we, we launched and created a, a research project looking at, you know, nozzles and technology around nozzles. Uh, and we had a team of engineers and team of scientists that work, you know, very closely together in, in what we called an innovation event, which is, uh, you know, a very intense, uh, you know, compact set of time where we work together to innovate as a group, test as a group, and develop solutions to try to solve the problem. Ultimately, coming out of that, we developed a nozzle that, that we're, we're quite proud of. Uh, we believe it's it's the best uh, sound reducing suppression nozzle on the market, and uh, we even have you know third party data that that supports that as well. So fundamentally, how does this nozzle work? Uh, it works by reducing the supersonic shock waves uh, and through noise absorption. There's multiple chambers in the nozzle with some pretty unique uh, and, and patented materials that we've developed to help reduce this sound. And ultimately, across the various different flow rates of our inert gas suppression system, from very low to very high flow rates, uh, we have that sound power characterized, and it's less than 110 decibels. But it does vary based on each unique suppression system and installation. So as we control how fast and the amount of gas that needs to go in each room, the parameters, the, the orifice that comes into the nozzle is controlled. Uh, we've uniquely characterized our nozzle uh, for each of those so that we can, you know, be confident in the sound output in any application. We have received some awards for this. 2017, we received what's known as the DCS, Data Center Innovative Product of the Year. Uh, so this was very exciting. Uh, we were selected, uh, you know, among m many leading companies and industries and, you know, different products, but we are ultimately chosen as the innovative product of the year. So we're quite happy to have that and you know, wear that badge proudly. Our fire suppression system nozzle was also the very first fire suppression nozzle to be verified by UL's uh, you know, verification service in which they actually took our suppression nozzle and looked at our data sheet and what we were claiming as our sound output. They developed a test program, scientific, scientifically evaluated our claims and then gave us their stamp of approval saying yes what you guys have published is your sound output is accurate and we stand by it as ul we also now just recently received the full ul suppression listing to the ul 2127 fire suppression standard so this gives us you know we're the first in the industry as well to have a full ul listed fire suppression nozzle with acoustic performance So looking at that acoustic performance, uh, here's just a quick plot uh, of the sound power versus on the cubic meter flow rate of gas coming out of the nozzle. Uh, the lower left-hand plot shows a, 
a little bit of a comparison between a standard nozzle and an acoustic nozzle. So the, the green noise plot you see for the first 30 seconds on the left is that of a suppression standard suppression nozzle. The next right hand 30 seconds is actually the exact same system fit with an acoustic nozzle recorded. So you can see it's quite dramatic the amount of sound reduction that we have generated. And it's actually about 32 times quieter than a standard suppression nozzle. We do have you know, published technical documents uh, on our product websites, uh, them showing you know, the performance of the nozzle, uh, its capabilities, materials of construction, overall size. Uh, and one of the key things to highlight here, not only did we you know, reduce the sound output, but we also kept the performance, the fire suppression performance of the nozzle, the same as the standard nozzle. So we didn't want to just be quieter uh, and have reduced firefighting capabilities. We wanted to make sure that we maintained or exceeded the standard nozzle. So, you know, we're, we're very proud to say that, you know, it's a direct replacement. It can be directly retrofit with a standard suppression nozzle, you know, replace a standard suppression nozzle directly with this and have the exact same firefighting performance. So the next piece of the puzzle that we wanted to solve was you know, take, we, had, we now have this suppression nozzle. We knew it was quieter and we knew it was below 110 decibels as a sound power output, but that we didn't feel that was good enough. We wanted to be able to provide confidence to our customers that we could develop and install, and install a solution that they would know in their facility and their application for their hard drives is actually less than 110 decibels. So we, we worked within our engineering and software teams to develop a tool that allows us to actually do a calculation specific and unique to every application to provide that calculation to show that we are confident that we can be below the 110 decibels. So how does that work? So if you recall the sound paradigm as sound trans translates from the source to the receiver, uh, here's kind of a you know quick look at what it is in a very simple data center, right? Sound power is generated by the suppression nozzle in the ceiling or in a subfloor in some cases. It's bounced off walls, through the air, you know, through cabinets, ultimately to be received by the hard drive inside that cabinet. So this means for us to be able to do that calculation from our nozzle to the hard drive, we actually need to know and calculate what those path loss, losses really are. So the, the room acoustics equation here, we're gonna take a little bit deeper look into, well, how do we do that? So in this slide, this shows actually the calculation that the hard drive sound pressure level, which is what we're interested in, is a function really of, of the nozzle sound power plus all this other log, you know, information logged, you know, and then ultimately we're looking at this R, which is the path losses, uh, which can be represented by an equation that looks at room construction materials uh, and then, you know, the alpha value of those, which is a function of each one third octave across each material to how it translates or changes sound. We also need to know, you know, data racks, types of, of racks, how many, any of that other equipment that will be put in rooms. And then lastly, we need to know really the, the distance between that source and receiver, between the nozzle and hard drive. With these pieces of information, you know, we're able to quite, quite accurately run a calculation to predict that sound pressure level at a hard drive. So, you know, kind of in summary what that, that tool is, right? It's a very simple calculation software that our technical services team actually will, will design per your room, looking at the suppression system, you know, and the function of, of how that suppression system works in the room, looking at nozzle pressures, flow rates, and how that ties with our sound characteristics of our suppression nozzle built into the software, but then also 
you know, looking at those room materials of construction, you know, getting that input, putting it into the software and generating a, a nice report that, you know, provides confidence in our solution. So here's a very simple example, uh, a nine meter by nine meter by four meter high room. The walls made of gypsum or an acoustic ceiling tile uh, and data center drop down subfloor. In this case, the suppression nozzle with the flow rate that was going into it generated a sound power uh, peaking at 107 decibels. Ultimately, through the calculation that was performed, we identified actually at the, the hard drive location, we were only exposing the hard drives to 95 decibels. So with this calculation, we're quite confident, you know, for the simple case study that, that we would not cause an interruption to service or damage those hard drives. And this can be done, you know, this is a very simple example, but, you know, we have the capability to do, you know, much more complex analysis and evaluation of, of data center rooms. Kind of to summarize, you know, what what should be done uh, in looking at acoustics within data centers, and what what are important takeaways from today's presentation. You know, specifically, the one thing that I want to make sure everyone you know takes away is to understand that acoustics are very important in data centers, and that hard drive sensitivity to sound and noise is is real. And it should be you know, considered very strongly as a specification in data centers to have some sort of sound thre threshold uh, specification for their hard drives at the actual hard drive location. Not just throughout the space, but actually what is the sound exposure specific to the hard drive locations. It's also important to look at when you're designing, modifying, uh, or updating a suppression system in a data center, making sure that you take acoustics into consideration. It's important, you know, to look at choosing this, the proper suppression nozzle for your application. It's also important to look at, you know, the other the other element that that we don't have much impact on with our products, but the actual, you know, noise path itself from the source to the receiver. One other way to, to further reduce your risk and actually lower sound, you know, experienced by hard drives is to actually change your construction of your room. You could put sound to, sound absorbing materials or panels inside of cabinets or on the walls or on the ceiling or floor uh, in your room, uh, which, you know, quite often can actually drastically help, you know, reduce the sound impact at hard drives. And then lastly, the actual hard drive location and mounting parameters. The further you're away from a sound source, you know, the less sound uh, you know, intensity it will receive. Uh, you know, that was one question that I've received before is, with a standard suppression nozzle, well, can't we just put the, the hard drives farther away so that it's safe for them? Well, if you look at uh, 135 decibels, uh, if you had a suppression nozzle at 135 decibels as a standard nozzle, you would have to put that away so far away, uh, you know, it, it ends up being multiple meters away that it's, it's physically not possible in a data center. So, so selecting the nozzle, locating hard drives as far away as possible, um, but also looking at inside data racks is, you know, could there be vibration isolating, dampening in the mounting uh, of the racks or mounting of hard drives in the rack? Thing that you know the sound generated from nozzles or any source the way it makes its way to hard drives is it ultimately causes the hard drives to vibrate and cabinets to vibrate so if you can reduce it and isolate some of that vibration between hard drives racks in the air uh, that helps drastically as well so i wanted to present to you guys you know a, a case study that we recently published uh, and this was for for a customer that we have in South Africa, uh, and it's Discovery Financial Services, uh, and, and they work very closely with us for this new data center that they were they were installing a 7,500 square foot data center that would essentially service some of their you know financial customers. 
and they wanted to be confident that you know all of these things of noise and suppression system discharges causing interruption in business they wanted to make sure that they had a solution that they could be confident wouldn't cause inadvertent inter interruption in their business so they approached us and we worked with them uh, looking very detailed at, at their data center design design a fire suppression for that uh, to make sure it fit in within the architecture as well as the space allocations in the new facility The system that we ended up working with them on and designing was our iFlow inert gas fire suppression system. The iFlow system is a regulated you know, gas discharge, uh, which, which reduces some of the peak pressures seen in non-regulated systems, uh, allowing a little bit lower uh, sound output from the base system itself. Uh, but then we were able to couple it with the new acoustic nozzle and drastically reduce the sound output. Uh, we as a part of the solution, we provided an acoustic calculation. Uh, we presented this, you know, to their data center team. Uh, they researched and evaluated it, and they were very happy in the solution that we provided. Uh, and, and, you know, they were so happy they allowed us to to publish a, a case study paper on on this effort. So, so they were quite happy. We're quite happy with the solution, uh, and in you know, knowing that we're confident that we, you know, will if they have a fire or an inadvertent discharge that we won't cause an interruption to their business. Now I'll turn it over to Christian, who's gonna talk a little bit more about our business development uh, and other fire suppression solutions, you know, tailored specifically to data centers. Well, awesome, thanks, Derek. That, I mean, that really is fascinating technology and, and probably first of its kind in the market. Um, so, so let's talk a bit about how we kind of get this technology in the hands of everybody on the webinar. And, and this is really how the business development team fits into the equation. And, and we'll talk a bit more about how we can help facilitate and guide you through the various fire suppression solutions, such as the acoustical nozzle. But before we do that, I thought it, it would just, it would make sense if we took a few minutes and we got everyone familiarized with the various types of fire suppression solutions available for the data center markets. So, so here we have our Ansel Energent iFlow clean agent fire suppression system. Now, these are probably the most flexible clean agent solutions in the market and making it like this most suitable choice for large complex data centers. Now, because it's an inert gas system, it allows for greater design flexibilities like coupling it with the acoustical nozzle and also things like remote cylinder storage. So basically what I'm saying is that we can actually install the cylinders up to like 300 feet away from the actual hazard. This means we're not occupying the valuable space in your data center. So I'm not saying that we can situate the cylinders in the parking lot because they do need to be housed in a temperature control environment, but it does give us more options when it comes to design and placement of the cylinders. So now the key enhancements shown here, like the innovative iFlow valve, the horizontal check valve and the user-friendly matrix bracketing system all contribute to reduce footprint space, lowering the upfront installation costs and provide for greater design flexibility that we just spoke about. So here's the really neat thing, and this is, this is, the, stuff, this is the thing that I really love. So these systems are actually backed by two types of 20-year warranties. Now the first one is what we call our evergreen discharge warranty. And it states that we'll replace the cost of energy agent following a discharge. Okay, so now you don't have to worry about the cost of, of recharging that system. Um, the second is our 20 year energy environmental warranty. Now this one, this warranty states that we'll cover the cost of a replacement system if, if a government entity identifies energy as a banned or restricted fire suppression agent. Um, from various environmental issues like, like global warming potential, um, ozone depleting potential, atmospheric lifetime, or agent decomposition products. So this gives you peace of mind that you've made the right choice in knowing that John's control stands behind their products and solutions. So Derek, if we can move to the next slide, please. Thanks. Now, this is our halo carbon clean agent fire suppression systems. And, and halo carbon agents are another means of fire suppression, and they're just as effective as inert gas systems. 
Now, these are probably the most widely used clean agents in the small to mid-sized data center market, and that's because of their compact design, um, their ease of installation and ease of maintenance. Now, you've probably noticed that we actually have two different types of halo carbon offerings. So we have uh, our Sapphire Novec 1230 system, as well as the FM200 clean agent system. Now, both of these are regarded as a highly effective and viable solution for data center applications. Now, as a side note, I wanted to make everyone aware that we're actually in the midst of updating our Sapphire Novak 1230 system to make it more feasible in these large complex data centers. So the new enhancements will actually accommodate greater design parameters and still keep its small footprint to ensure that the cylinders are occupying the least amount of space in your data center. Now, Again, the, the, the neat thing here is our, our Sapphire Novak 1230 systems are also covered by that 20-year environmental warranty. So this is that same warranty that states that we'll cover the cost of a replacement system if a government entity identifies Novak 1230 as a banned or restricted fire suppression agent. Okay, and, and again, for, for, you know, um, issues such as global warming potential, ozone depletion potential, and atmospheric lifetime. So again, that same peace of mind. All right, Derek, if we can move to the next slide, please. Awesome, thanks. So now we do understand that there's going to be applications where gaseous fire suppression systems aren't desired. And for those applications, we have traditional pre-action sprinkler systems, uh, such as our DB5 valve. Okay, and the DB5 valve is the, is the uh, valve shown in the bottom right-hand corner there. Now, these pre-action systems can be designed with various uh, design configurations, such as single interlock or double interlock, depending on your application. And, and the neat thing is they can actually be utilized in their natural form, or they can be integrated into what we call our ready cabinet, which is a plug-and-play type of pre-action system that's both durable and aesthetically pleasing. So, the ready cabinet is actually the, that red cabinet in the, cent the, the center image there, okay? So if you're actually looking for something with a little more safety margin for potential water damage, our FM approved aqua mist ULF, ultra low flow water mist system is also available. So the aqua mist technology uses roughly 80% less water when compared to, excuse me, to traditional sprinkler systems. So Aquamist technology distributes water in very small droplet size, and I'm talking like uh, less than 1,000 microns. And this eliminates any type of water collection during discharge. And that's probably something that I'm sure you can appreciate when it comes to protecting sensitive electrical equipment. Uh, if we can move to the next slide there. Awesome. So now that we've seen all this great technology from the acoustical novel to the various types of suppression systems available, how do we get this information in your hands? Well, really, that's, that's where the business development team comes into play. And really the function of the business development team is to kind of help navigate through the various types of suppression solutions available in the data center market. So we'll actually take the project from problem to concepts to design and ultimately to delivery through our sales channel. So we kind of act as a consultant or like a technical liaison to help guide you through the solution process. So some of the key functions that the business development team work on are things like um, product or excuse me, project evaluation. Uh, we can assist with specification language. Um, we also conduct educational forums such as lunch and learns and product demonstrations. Um, we also do things like hands-on technical assistance, like, like the, acoustic, uh, excuse me, the acoustical nozzle solution. Okay. Uh, Derek, please move to the next slide, please. Thanks. <clears throat> so in the instance of the acoustical nozzle, we'd actually help conduct the acoustical software calculation. So that means we're actually coming to site. We're going to help determine the corrective measure, assist with the, uh, excuse me, assist with the nozzle design configuration, and then help the sales team implement. So we actually have a team of individuals across the globe that are available to help you through the process and make sure that your existing or new gaseous suppression system isn't going to interfere with the operation of your hard disk drives. Uh, next slide, please, there. Awesome, thanks. 
So this slide gives you a snapshot of the business development team and where we're situated in the Americas. So geographically, you'll see that we're pretty well represented across, across North America to kind of give a you know, maximum coverage. So this slide is showing obviously Canada and, and the US and we have uh, ultimately 10 individuals covering uh, North America. Uh, next slide, please, Derek. Thanks. And then this last slide represents our team in South America. Now, and, and, and sorry, before I, before I move on, we actually have two gentlemen that cover um, South America. Uh, one gentleman is looking after Brazil in its entirety, and then the other gentleman is looking after the remainder part of uh, South America. So I do have to apologize because I, I didn't have a slide representing the entire global business development team, but I just wanted everyone to know that we do have individuals strategically placed across the globe um, that are covering areas like the Asia Pacific, EMEA, and obviously the Americas that we just saw. So before we hand this off to questions, we thought we, we, would, we would offer um, a, a complimentary acoustic analysis for anyone on the call that has an inert gas system in their data center. So if you're interested, you'll have the opportunity to inquire about that, uh, that uh, offer, okay? And with that, I will hand it back to you, Derek. Hey, Christian, thank you. Mike really here. I uh, just wanted to see if any questions uh, were there. If you do have a question, please feel free to type it into the uh, text box and we can get it answered. Um, and, and I'll give it one minute for folks to uh, to provide any questions. Uh, meanwhile, I wanted to um, kind of wrap things up here. I think this is a great example of Johnson's capabilities uh, within the fire suppression space uh, and really represents what we can do throughout the data center, whether it be on the HVAC equipment, the controls, the fire, and the security side of it. Um, and so as you think about your data centers, as you think about retrofit opportunities, New, new construction, as well as uh, operations and maintenance, you know, please don't hesitate to reach out. We'd love to discuss our capabilities, put you in touch with the right folks. Uh, our website provides a great uh, tool by which to really understand uh, specifics in regard to our products and service offerings, as well as a way by which to get in touch with us uh, and we can get you to the right person depending on uh, where you're located physically and, and geographically. Um, with that said, uh, I don't have any questions now. Uh, so if questions do come up later, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, I think uh, some information will be shared uh, upon closing of the uh, presentation as well as in a follow-up email to receive that free acoustical analysis. Uh, so please take advantage of that. Would love to uh, understand the circumstances of your data center better as well as uh, really provide some key insights in terms of the acoustics of it. Um, with that said, just want to wrap things up here. Uh, thank you, Derek. Uh, thank you, Christian, uh, for your efforts here. Appreciate it. Uh, again, for folks on the phone, please don't hesitate to visit us at uh, our uh, data center website, johnsoncontrols.com slash data centers. Um, and with that said, I think that's a wrap. Thank you. Have a great day and look forward to uh, staying in touch.